Welcome to Lekavata Beach Lodge in South Africa and Craig Foster from My Octopus Teacher. I'm Craig Foster. I've been a filmmaker for 30 years, um, worked in all over Africa, started diving when I was three years old and my greatest passion is the ocean and the animals, especially in the kelp forest. For me, Lekavata really is situated in the heart of the world. And I say that because the latest DNA uh, evidence, the latest archaeological evidence, strongly point to Southern Africa as the origin of our species. And especially the archaeology shows this incredible occupation of early humans along the coast with this intense area in the Southern Cape, very close to Lekavata. So you've got so many caves uh, right near the lodge that have clear evidence uh, for Stone Age occupation. And then the very famous caves like Clip Drift, very close, almost within walking distance. Blombos, not that far away. These are the most important Middle Stone Age sites in the world. There's only a handful of them around the world and m most of them are along our, our coast. And you've got two of the key sites right on your doorstep. So those early humans, the ancestors of literally every single person on this planet today, would have been regularly walking past Lekavata, camping there, fishing there, hunting there on the land. And because it's still so pristine and so few people are there, the sense you get, it's not hard to imagine being 100,000 years ago and, and literally feeling the footprints of those early ancestors right there. So, I mean, I've been privileged enough to work with Professor Chris Henshelwood, who is um, one of the best archaeologists in the world and has spent 30 years excavating uh, Blombos and Cliptrift Cave on the south coast of South Africa. He's brought together the best paleoscientists in the world, from all over the world, to spend 10 years studying these caves and literally unlocking details of the climate at 100,000 years old details of the people almost going and able to see individual humans living in the cave a hundred thousand years ago the fingerprints of our ancestors the preservation levels are extraordinary you can take something that's a hundred thousand years ago a, a shell or something that someone's eaten or a tool and you look at it and it almost looks like it's been you know come out a few months ago this is a scientific window, a literal time machine into our species, Homo sapiens, like, like, like never before. We've come down this crazy route. We're, in a, we're on a planet that is faltering in many ways, you know, because of our actions. And it's incredibly powerful, especially at this time, to look back and to see how we were designed. We are all Africans by nature. Three quarters of our time we incubated in Africa. No matter where you come from, we are all African by nature. And to know that and to see how we lived so gently, so powerfully on this planet for so long gives enormous inspiration for moving forward. Quite often a, a person who's never been to Africa on a first time visit when they come here, they feel a deep connection. Is this maybe they are sensing a bit of their history and their past, or is that too romantic? <laughs> what is so interesting is, as you say, a lot of people come to Africa, um, especially this part of Africa, and they have a strange sense of feeling at home. If you look at the primal mind, the human eyes looking out at a landscape, and imagine yourself at Lekavata, you've got that boss in the front, that green, greenish, brownish boss, and then you've got the white strip of the beach, and then that blue ocean, some kelp, and then a blue sky. Those colors are the primal address of the human mind. And we can remember that. And when you feel it, it hits you right here. It's a, it's a very powerful feeling because you know in the deepest part of your being that you are home. So there, there are no other places on earth that offer that. And what's so great about Lekavata, they're not big condominiums and hundreds of people on the beach. And it, it's, it's got that feeling of 100,000 years ago. You know, if you had to do one trip in your life, no matter where you were in the world, would you not consider going to the home 
where you will find your original mother and father, their evidence of their, what extraordinary things they did. I mean, it is the ultimate trip for any human being to really connect with your species and who you are. We designed to live in this African environment in small groups on a giant landscape, completely dominated by vast herds of animals, enormous numbers of animals in the ocean. And it's reversed now. So to have at least that experience in some small form again can have a huge effect on the human psyche. If we look at our species, we're about uh, 300,000 years old. If you look through time and you come down from that 300,000 to about 100,000, what you suddenly see in the archaeology is this extraordinary, extraordinary explosion of cognition. You see artifacts that defy belief, but have now become mainstream science, the very first art the very first science, the first chemistry, really the precursors to the, the, the first books and computers. This is what was discovered on the coast of South Africa, a stone's throw away from Lekavata. It's the most significant time in all of human history because that is when, for the very first time, the human mind put something down outside of the inside of the, of the head. Actually constructed a symbol inside the brain and had this momentous uh, idea to put that down in a form on something that could then go past many lifetimes. And we can literally pick up the artifacts that our ancestors engraved on a hundred thousand years ago and still see those symbols. And that uh, process changed the whole course of our species and the whole course of this planet. Every single thing we do today is based upon symbols. All our technology, all our, every single thing we do, our language, everything. So this extraordinary thing that started about a hundred thousand years ago on the south coast of Africa had, has had repercussions for our entire species, our entire planet. And what do you think was the trigger which changed from 300,000 to 100,000? Yeah, you know, nobody absolutely knows, but if you had to have a very educated guess at why you see this incredible change around 100,000, it's probably because this environment, the Southern Cape, and a large you know, part of the, the South African coast, was like this perfect storm for human life. You have a, a beautiful moderated climate, not too hot, not too cold. All the fresh water is fantastic for drinking. Very low parasites, no malaria, no tsetse fly. The ocean bringing in incredible food on a regular basis in the form of you know, large mammals. Uh, underground plants, lots of carbohydrate big herds of animals available for eating on land. It's just the perfect place for humans to thrive. The intertidal zone is very important for early humans in that you can imagine if you have to go and hunt an animal, this kind of thing, it requires a lot of energy. You know, they know exactly when the low tides, they're completely connected to the cycles of the moon. They just go down and even a child can collect a lot of food. It's easy and it's regular, and there are fantastic micronutrients in that food. But it's not just that that upgraded the human brain. It's multiple factors of, and multiple foods and multiple lack of stress. So you have only got about an hour or two a day to get all your needs for survival. So you've got all that other time to invent, to create, and to become uh, this symbolic creature. So I've spent the last eight and a half years diving every day and documenting the secret lives of these extraordinary animals in the kelp forest. And I've done that by taking what I learned from master trackers in the central Kalahari and creating an underwater tracking system that I can track animals and get inside their secret lives. And this book is, is partly 
uh, about that process. Sea change, the word means a transformation brought about by nature. And uh, this kind of transformation I've experienced um, through immersion, cold water immersion, I don't wear wetsuits, I try and get close to that environment. And just the passion I have for this, what I call the Great African Sea Forest. So the Great African Sea Forest stretches from um, the edge of Namibia all around to Dehuerp. And it's about 1,300 kilometers long and it differs in width as you, as you go down the coast. And Craig, outside of Lakavati is the marine protected area. A lot of your work is not done in marine protected areas. What do you want to achieve in the areas you work mm. in around Cape Town and down towards Cape Wave? When we dive in marine protected areas, it's just so obvious. There's so much more life, so much more fish, everything's thriving. I think it's absolutely critical, not only for our area, but for the entire planet to realize that we have to have much larger protected areas. Only 5% now of our entire South African ocean is protected. So we're desperately trying to be part of the movement to increase that protection. I believe we need at least 30% of wilderness places or the whole planet protected if we are to be serious about future survival. All our oxygen supply, or 60-70%, comes from the ocean. We critically need these protected areas for our own future survival. It's not even multiple generations, it's our generation. This is how extreme it is. So for everybody's benefit, we need large areas of the ocean protected. And our great vision is to try and get a UNESCO Natural World Heritage Site in place in a large piece of the kelp forest and this uh, Cape of Good Hope. Uh, environment because it is one of the most biodiverse places on the planet. The endemism is through the roof. We've got one of the only places in the world where two huge ocean currents meet. We've got the return of the whales. We've got an unbelievable piece of wilderness here that is by a miracle still somewhat intact. And I think it's absolutely critical that we put measures in place on every level to protect it. Everybody has that power to decide what they want to buy or not. And if you can take the time and effort to buy things that at least are not too damaging to the environment, that support the environment, to support anything that assists the environment and actively don't buy things and support things that, that are damaging to the environment, this is a very powerful thing that every individual has. I'm very lucky to be part of this nonprofit organization, an incredible group of people, scientists, storytellers, filmmakers, who's, who are dedicated to working for the ocean, for ocean protection and for media advocacy um, to just highlight the, the, the extraordinary life in the ocean. Our website is www seachangeproject.com. We've got a, a big film coming out, we've got the book coming out, and a, a big drive and a campaign to get a large part of this ocean protected as a UNESCO World Heritage Site.